Hello, this is uh, day two of our uh, self-coaching to diamond, which I'm thinking I'm going to change it from self-coaching to self-grind, because it's kind of hard to self-coach yourself when you don't know very much. So we're probably going to be looking at getting into coach, but yesterday we had the issue of our level two, so we worked on that today, and right here is an instance where we are uh, melee into double range but we got the level two advantage and as you can see we have nine minions of ours up one two three four five six seven eight nine nine of our minions up but they still have to kill three more of ours no they have to kill another six of ours whereas they only have six minions up and it takes a total of nine minions to hit level to hit level two. So that means we've already killed six because the first wave is entirely gone, leaving us with only these three minions to kill. And here we actually, once we see that the last one gets low on health, which I believe is this guy right here, we play way forward and not actually ends up following up. And he don't even, I don't even think he hits a single ability, but just because of our aggression and stuff he knew to follow up and because of us hitting level two there was not a whole lot they could do go ahead and play this out it's a good example of how to use level two you get a really good trade-off As you can see there, actually Nautilus lands one ability, and that's onto the wall. <laughs> but we are actually able to uh, get a really good chunk off onto Janna, leaving up, setting us up really well for the rest of this lane. So after getting the really good trade onto the Janna, she ends up healing all the way back up really quickly though. But either way, we know that since we're into Tristana, who has a passive that does AoE damage after killing a unit so that means she shoves the wave kind of like similar to draven meaning she pushes the wave kind of naturally and it's hard for her to freeze unless you push back into her realizing that after getting the kill i mean not the kill getting the good trade off we look to freeze the lane because we see also that akaram is starting to come back to bot side as he's here probably gonna go here and if we can freeze the wave right here it sets him up for a really good gank So if we go ahead and play out this video, you'll see them slowly push back into, su into us, setting us up with a really good freeze. And there is the beautiful freeze, and we can see Hakarum clearing Scuttle, and proceeds to head down for a gank, setting us up for a nice, easy kill. Here, also a small little tip: you'll see that after getting the kill onto Caitlyn, we look to shove the wit. I'm not Caitlyn onto Tristana. We like to shove the wave because when you're looking to reset, it's always best to be able to shove the wave. And if it's a cannon wave, like as we see here, we have a cannon minion. It's actually even better because it sets us up, makes it even harder for Tristana to shove into us. Usually you would back when the cannon wave arrives in this instance. We don't quite do that. We actually end up pushing in the cannon wave, which usually you push the wave before in. But either way, it ends up working out and we get a good uh, push right before backing, make it send us up for the wave when we get back. Even though it does take us a long time to back, but we end up getting to wave in time. For it to be right, or tower. Which is an effective way of backing to make sure the shove beforehand and to shove on a min cannon minion is preferred, preferably the wave just before, so that the cannon wave will crash all the way into the tower. 
making it harder for them to push. Just after getting back to wave, after backing, allowing Tristan to shove up to our tower, we actually now have it set up so that they are shoved really far up, letting Hecarim have a free gank onto our tower. Oh. Come on. It's not looking like a slideshow. Regular speed? Okay. So, it leaves it for an easy gank on the Hecarim, setting us up with a free kill onto Janna. And though we did just back, it's still a good idea to go ahead and back here because as you can see, we have enough gold to get our quick, our quick, uh, our quiver, the 1300 item that builds into all the mythics. And then we also, also can get boots, which is another 300. So shoving here is a good idea. It's also a good idea because we have a cannon and two casters already set up to shove this wave in. It's a free opportunity we can take advantage of, even though we did just back. This still just continues to push our lead onto the Tristana. Here's an example of where we can see level two, because as you can see, oh, as you can see, we are a uh, Kaisen Diana bot against a Blitzcrank and Jin. So our level two actually isn't super strong. Uh, Kaisen level two, not bad, but we just don't have any CC from support follow us up or to set us up I should say because we're not really doing the follow-up and we're not doing the engaging so since we don't have that we actually didn't get a clear advantage on level two meaning we, it wasn't obviously gonna go to us so we gave it up and let them go ahead and shove us in Oops. Well, he's right you'll see you can see level two By avoiding conflict, let me shove it. And this bit, this wave will slowly shove into us. And this is the reason why we did this is because we knew that trying to fight over level two, then getting stuck in the middle of the wave with a Blitzcrank and Jin versus a Kais and Diana was not going to go in our favor. <laughs> So here we actually end up finally getting shoved in under tower, but we get a little bit greedy and see that the Blitzcrank is going to try to proc the relic onto it, or not the relic, whatever you want to call it, uh, tower destroyer, that rune, <laughs> the one where it like lets you blow up the tower for a percent of your HP. And I see that he goes for this, so I tried to punish him by going in on him, but uh, something ends up happening. Here we go in, but we lose respect for the gin, I mean the Blitzcrank being able to pull us and that they're level three and that they are they are very capable of bursting us down right now because Jin has his fourth auto up as you can see. Blitzcrank's gonna pull me. Jin's got Q alt aiming Q, W, and Blitzcrank has E, so there's just a lot of damage here. And if he pulls me, I'm hit, no longer under tower, nothing to protect me. Which, you see, they all happen. <laughs> and But thankfully, Diana's clutch and gets the kill for us. So that is something though, keep aware of, is to respect and know the enemy's skill threat, which is Blitzcrank's kill. Alrighty. So here's another good example of where we are able to get the level two advantage. As you'll see here, we'll go in, we'll get a really good trade out on the both the brand and the Ash, leaving them both below 200. Actually, I do believe Ash, I think it's right at 200, or maybe a little bit below, or maybe a little bit above. I can't tell, but brand is definitely at like, literally 100 health or something. Oh, yeah, at exactly like 100 health. But, uh, there is a rule to ADC that uh, XSFN Saber Saber came up with, which is take the 99% play. Uh, don't ever take the 1% play. Always pick the safe play because consistency is key on ADC. And this is a perfect instance of it here. After getting that really good trade and having level two advantage, we should look just to harass with their Q as it comes back up. This minion's getting low. We should Q to try to lower them even more and then maybe even go in eventually. But as you will see, oh, that is not what we do. And after getting the wave close to shoving in, we try to make the 1% play. 
and we end up paying the price for it. All right. About here in a little bit. It's right about here that we go to make the percent. It's ADC, no one's asking you to be Superman, so don't worry about being the hero. Make sure that you are always there, that you are able to consistently perform. Which is unfortunate what we don't there, because if we were to just stay in lane and shove this wave in, we could have reset after getting cannon, getting a at least a dagger. Or a long sword, I mean a long sword, at least getting a long sword. Then we could have pushed our lead even further. But because we don't do that, we throw our lead, making this lane even harder than it needs to be. Here's another reason why we don't go for the superhero plays or the 1% plays. Talk over this while this plays out. So here we see that Ash and Brand are level 6, meaning they can perma lock down and do enough damage to kill me, but instead. I think I can dodge the brand Q to be able to do a good trade on him, but not thinking that even if I did dodge it, Ash still has her ulti. Not to mention, if I get caught by it, I'm literally not even playing the video game for the next like five seconds, which ends up being the case. And brand hits an ult Q onto me, then Ash is able to hit a ulti onto me, giving Ash a free kill. Thankfully, Seraphine was able to do enough damage to kill the for us. So I officially know what I'm working on for next stream, which is just going to be purely uh, decision making and just making sure to think to take the secure play here. Once again, we proceed to try to make the hero play when we don't even need to we'll play this as we go. We get the Tristana. We see the rail is low. We think, oh, we can outplay. And of course, we ended up just trading kill for kill, which is not ideal because we could have pushed clear that next wave, given us another about 200 gold, given us their dagger, and setting us up with 1,000 gold instead of having only 700 to spend, or 850. Either way, not worth the one for one trade. It also gives the rel gold. Either way, don't take the 1% trades, is what I'm trying to say, as of course I proceed to do it three times. <laughs> 